We've already taken a look at the closest exoplanet to Earth, that's the one orbiting Proxima Centauri. But what about after that? Well, the next star out is Barnard's star, and we found a planet orbiting that sun too. Let's pay it a visit, shall we? Lying just six light years away, that's next door but one in galactic terms, we find Barnard's star. It's too dim to be seen with the naked eye from the Earth, which tells us a little bit about the star. It belongs to the most abundant star type, being a red dwarf. It has a radius only about 20% of the Sun. That's only about twice the radius of Jupiter. It's also a very dim star. It has a feeble 0.4% of the luminosity of our Sun. It's also an ancient star, possibly twice as old as our Sun, maybe even 12 billion years old. If this is the case, this star formed only about one and a half billion years after the formation of the universe. The age of this star throws up some interesting ideas, but I'll get to those later. Just like other red dwarf stars, the habitable zone for Barnard's star is very close in, ranging from 5.1 to 12.3 million kilometers. That's less than one fifth of the distance from our sun to the planet Mercury. Much, much further out than this, orbiting at about 60 million kilometers, or roughly the distance from Mercury to our sun, Barnard's star has a planet. It's way outside the region where liquid water can exist, and it orbits in 232 days. Barnard's star B is a massive planet, having a mass of about 3.23 Earths. This would make it a super Earth type rocky planet. We don't know the radius of this planet, but if it has the same density as the Earth, this would then give it a radius about twice that of our planet. Barnard's star, like many red dwarfs, is a flare star. In fact, it's flared twice in recent history. Once in 1998, in which the flare was more than twice the usual temperature of the star. It flared again recently in 2020, erupting twice in close succession. This is however considered to be unusual behaviour. Red dwarfs are considered to be flare stars, but this behaviour is usually confined to their early age. By the time they have reached the age of Barnard's star, they're thought to have calmed down a little, so this is definitely thought to be aberrant behaviour. It's also thought that these flares would be very bad news for any planets with atmospheres, acting to strip away those atmospheres of any planets in that star system. Recent research, however, has suggested that the calming down of these stars may give planets an opportunity to develop a secondary atmosphere. We have no idea about any atmosphere on this planet, but what we do know is that it will be cold. Estimates suggest that the temperature will be about minus 170 degrees Celsius. We're okay in our cosy time and space machine, so let's land and have a look round. Even though we're much closer to the star than the Earth is from the Sun, Barnard's star is much smaller and much dimmer than our Sun. Out here, the star would look about half the size of our Sun from the Earth, although it is much, much dimmer. This is a frigid world, lying well beyond the snow line. This is the distance at which liquid water is possible. Recent research has suggested that maybe geothermal activity could heat pockets of water below the surface of the planet, producing conditions where life could exist. But well, this is very much conjecture. Interestingly, since this star is so close in galactic terms, direct imaging of the planet may be possible, and therefore we might be able to see if it has an atmosphere. The chances are that it doesn't due to the extreme solar radiation, but we don't know for certain, so we're still free to speculate. If the planet does have an atmosphere, then the sky may have an orange hue, depending on the composition of that atmosphere. Regardless of the colour of the light, the sky would look rather dimmer than sunlight on Earth. If we waited until night and looked at the sky, many of the stars that we could see would be in a very similar position to how they would look from Earth. If we looked towards the constellation of Monoceros, we would see an additional bright star in the night sky. That's our sun. The whole of our civilizations and history is just there in that bright speck of light. Looking round, this planet has little to recommend itself. It's cold and barren, 
and probably lifeless. It is interesting, however, to come and explore any world that isn't our own, and each world can tell us a little more about the universe that we live in. Just before we finish, I make frequent explorations of outer space, inner space and time. If you want to join me on my journeys then don't forget to subscribe. My space and time machine is bigger on the inside, so there's plenty of room for everyone. The mere presence of a rocky planet orbiting such an ancient star gives us interesting hints at planet formation. The heavier elements that make up rocky planets, in other words the metals, were formed during the supernovae of massive stars. It used to be thought that since it needed time for these elements to be formed in sufficient quantities for the formation of rocky planets, that our Sun might have been one of the first generation of stars that had rocky planets. The discovery of red dwarfs, billions of years older than our Sun, with their own planetary system containing rocky planets, effectively dismissed that idea. So even though Barnard's star and its planet are probably lifeless places, they're still fascinating for what they can tell us about the universe. Well, I think it's time for us to return to the relative warmth of the Earth, and until next time we go exploring our fascinating universe, thank you for watching. <laughs>